Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is, by popular demand, the ending of Intervention, where you end up with both Hawks and Darby. I'm so sorry, I didn't even entertain the idea of both, but I'll make sure to make that a thing from now on, if there's a book involving two characters vying for your attention. So without further ado, here is part 13 of Intervention. Enjoy. Slowly your life changed for the better. You started working again, on all planes, working on yourself, working out, working as a hero. It was hard juggling everything, but you had Hawks and Darby to ground you. Well, Darby beating your self-depreciation into the ground and Hawks beating your insecurities into the ground. I mean, what else could you do but be confident and positive? It was a blessing to have both of them in your life. But you had a problem, a big one. You liked them both, like really liked them both. You had a feeling that they both liked you too, but you weren't 100% sure. Okay, that was a lie. You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that Hawks liked you. He'd been very forward about that, but Darby was a little bit more coy. It was starting to get to the point where you were considering getting away from both of them just so that you didn't have to choose. It would have killed you if you'd had to pick one and then had found out that the other really wanted to be with you too. That just wouldn't have been fair, given all that you'd been through with them. You owed a lot of your new self to their help. These concerns and musings had been rolling around in your mind for a month now, and Hawks, working alongside you most days, had noticed a shift in your moods. His initial concern was that your ex had suddenly gotten back under your skin, but then he quickly realised that it somehow involved him. Your heart rate would increase whenever he called your name, you couldn't look him in the eye for too long, and you would adjust your outfit whenever he was around. He liked this, this was a good sign for him. But then he also noticed how quickly you answered a call from Darby, and how you would smile as you answered the phone, then quickly excuse yourself to talk to him in quiet. This he kinda didn't like, but kinda did. He knew that if it came down to him or Darby, you would probably say no to both so that you wouldn't hurt either. He knew what you were like, so he hatched a plan. Hey Yin, can I borrow your phone for a quick second? Hawks asked as he strolled into your office one afternoon, hands in pockets and cool, calm smile on. Hawks, he said with surprise as he walked in through the open office door. What are you doing here? Why do you need my phone? I don't need to make a pizza order. I'm too chicken to ask for extra chicken on my pizza from my phone. Because they're starting to catch on that it's me, despite using alias names. And there's a big group of fans waiting for me when I get to my food. And it's a little embarrassing, he lied, giving you a sheepish look and a scratch to the back of his head. You snorted and shook your head as you pulled your phone out of your pocket and handed it to him. Hear him talk. Okay, fine, here. But bring it back. Of course, he replied with a smirk. Any chance to see you again? You tried to hide the flustered look on your face and waved your hand dismissively as you looked back down at the desk. Okay, whatever. See you soon. He nodded and gave you a wave as he turned away from you, opening your phone and scrolling through your contacts to look for Darby's name. He found it easily and clicked on it, holding the phone to his ear as he walked down the hall. Darby picked up instantly. Middle of the day call, Darby said into the receiver. Where do you want to meet tonight? Oh, was there going to be a rendezvous? Hawks asked smugly. What the hell are you doing with that phone, you Furby flamingo? Darby growled into the receiver, annoyed and embarrassed that he had spoken so candidly to Hawks, his friend and rival. Listen, I need to talk to you about Yin, Hawks said honestly as he headed off down a hall that didn't have anyone around. I called you on her phone because I figured you'd pick up, and you did. You never answer my calls. I answered your call the other day and all you did was ask if my fridge was running. When I said yes, you said I should go and catch it. He deadpanned. This is why you're going to die alone. Hawks chuckled. <laughs> I thought it was a good joke. Well, it wasn't to piss off, Darby said. Wait, one important question regarding Yin. Do you love her? Hawks asked pointedly, stopping in his tracks in the middle of the hall. Because I love her, he added. His reveal making Darby fall silent. But you knew that already. Why are you being so quiet? Hawks added. Why are you wasting your breath here? Darby asked. If you love her, then go tell her, not me. Oh, why don't you tell me the truth? I want to hear it from you, Hawks said. Tell me straight out. Do you love her? There was a deafening silence from Darby's end. Why do I have to... Just say it, Darby. Hawks snapped a little. Fine, I love her. Darby said in a sulky, semi-embarrassed tone. But don't tell her. I want it. I'm not going to say a word, but I'm going to ask you another question. 
What if I confess to her first? Hawks then asked, hoping to drag up some fear in Darby before pitching his proposal. You know I can make people disappear, right? Darby replied snidely. And so can I? Hawks replied with just as much smugness in his voice. But I have a different idea this time. Hear me out on this one. It was about 20 minutes later that Hawks strolled back into your office with your phone and you looked up as he entered. No luck, he said with a sigh. I knew it was me. I've got to stop ordering the same thing every time. Yeah, you do, you said as you took your phone back from him. Maybe try somewhere other than pizza joints for once? Noted, he replied with a small knowing smirk. Maybe I'll branch out. Yeah, you do that, you replied, looking down at the phone as it buzzed in your hand from an incoming call. Sorry, I gotta take this, you said when you saw Darby's name on the screen. Hawks nodded and turned to leave the room, noting how your countenance brightened as you answered the call. This is an early call, Hawks heard you say as you placed the phone to ear and smiled as you spoke. You only call me when it's half past five. He closed your door as he left and pushed his hands into his pocket as he strolled off down the hall. I'm sure this will work, he thought as he headed for the building doors. It was close to 9pm and you were getting ready to meet Darby. He had asked for you to meet him at the club at the end of town. He said he had organised a booth in the VIP section and had alluded to it being a special occasion. I wonder if he's going to get drinks for us. Is this going to be a bit of a date, I wonder? You pondered these things as you stepped back to check out your outfit. It was a lot more daring than you'd ever thought you'd ever wear, but you'd caught Darby checking you out on more than one occasion and you liked how his cold turquoise eyes undressed you with the coldest of stares. It was enough to send a shiver down your spine. Doing one last side check in the mirror, you grabbed your bag and shoes and headed for the door, curious about what was going to happen that night. The club was already well underway when you got there, and you skipped the line and walked straight to the bouncers at the door. Here to see Darby, you said to the large man on the left, and he nodded and stepped aside to let you through, while the other guy got the door for you and held it open as you entered. Thank you, he said politely as you stepped inside. It was dark and loud and you couldn't see a dang thing except for the moving bodies that were writhing and bouncing to the beat. Turning to the back wall, you headed for the stairs and the VIP section, holding the rail and squeezing past people who had made that space a makeout zone. Darby's booth, you called over the noise to a man in security clothing at the top of the stairs. He nodded and started leading the way to the private function area. Why are we going to the function rooms? You wondered, starting to feel a little suspicious about this. Is this a setup? Am I going to get jumped? Now a little uneasy, you activated your quirk as you were taken towards the doors to the function rooms and read the heat signatures on the other side of the door. Two? Two people? Dubby and... Wait, what? You picked up the shape of feathers in your readings and frowned with confusion. Why would Hawks be here? The man stopped at the door and opened it for you, bowing as he ushered you in, and you stepped inside and looked at the two boys standing there, side by side, with arms crossed across their chests. What's going on? You asked, looking from one to the other. You told me to try new places, so here I am, Hawk said with a goofy smile, dropping his arms. I'm regretting this already, Darby muttered. Darby? You asked. What's going on? Let me start, Hawk said. You flicked him a glance and scowled. It's Darby's turn, Hawks. I want to know what's going on, and I want the truth. You'll only tell me a version of the truth. Which is on to you, Darby said to Hawks, and the feathered hero raised his hands in surrender and gave you a goofy grin. Yeah, <laughs> you got me. I'll sit this one out then. Stage is yours, Dabs, he said as he took a large step to the side and turned to face Darby. You looked back at Darby. Well, you asked, popping one hip out and resting your weight on the other leg. Darby fell unusually quiet and you could feel the stress in him rising. You didn't want to force it out of him, but you also didn't want to give him the ticket out of talking. So you just waited. Don't know where to start, but long story short, we both want you, he stated, ending his sentence there. Your eyebrows shot up into your hairline and Hawks started clapping. Darby, irritated that Hawks appeared to be mocking him, threw his left arm out and threw a blue fireball at the irksome hero, narrowly missing him. Yeah, pretty much sums it up. Hawks confirmed, facing you now. So, what, what do you mean? You both want me, you asked. You both want me as in... We both want to date you. We both want you to call us yours. 
So we're prepared to call a truce if you'll have us both, Hawke said, that playful smile now replaced by a gentle but serious look. You knew he wasn't mucking around. You looked at Darby. He nodded in confirmation. What do you say, Ian? Hawks then asked. Um, well, it's a lot to take in in one go. I mean, I have a thing for both of you guys, but is this really going to work? You guys don't really see eye to eye. Hawks stepped closer to Darby and slung an arm over his shoulder, causing the patchwork villain to stiffen up immediately. He's just excited that I'm hugging him. Hawks covered for Darby's reaction. Darby? You asked again. If I'm going to lose to anyone, I'd take myself out if it were to him. At least this way I can keep an eye on him. When he treats you bad, I can take him out. Darby stated dryly. You thought for a moment, then shrugged. Oh, I guess we can give it a shot and see who's left standing in the end. You said as you walked over to your two boys and stopped in front of them. Scissors, paper, rock, you two. You said, gesturing for them to partake in the game. Why the hell do I do it? You hissed at Darby. He grunted his resignation and held a fist out to the very overjoyed Hawks who was more than ready to play. Scissors, Scissors paper, paper rock, rock, they said in unison, both throwing a hand out to the other. Hawks with scissors and Darby with rock. Darby wins, he said, then leaned in and caught his lips against yours, the staples along his bottom lip running cold against your hot lip as his tongue suddenly met yours. After a quick kiss, you pulled back and then stepped over to Hawks, who was all too ready to kiss you and locked his lips eagerly with yours. Best of three, Hawks said in a daydreamy voice as you broke from the kiss, holding his fist out to Darby again. Only if you lose all the time, I want more of you. Darby replied, grabbing your arm and yanking you towards him. Hey, share Darby, or I'll carry you out of here with my feathers, Hawks warned playfully. Ugh, I immediately regret this, you groaned playfully as Hawks grabbed your other arm. Ugh, come on, let's hit the VIP section, I want to drink and dance to this. And there is the poly ending for the Hot Wings fans, stay tuned for a new book coming soon.